Hey, welcome everybody to another edition of Redbird Review. I'm Dick Ludke, your host for this edition and our special guest. We're so happy to have the opportunity to talk with Colton Underwood, the former Redbird football yeah. great who spent a little time in the NFL, but after that spent time as The Bachelor on the 23rd season of ABC's The Bachelor. Colton, uh, welcome to, uh, to Redbird Reunion. So good to have you with us. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. You're, uh, you had a little notoriety when you were playing football at Illinois State. Certainly uh, Redbird fans were very acquainted with you, as were a lot of football fans in central Illinois, but that has since escalated to an amazing degree. How are you dealing with, uh, with the fame that, that you've uh, achieved in your life here early? Uh, I mean, it's, it's even weird to, to say fame or celebrity. Um, for me, it's just like, you know, I went on a show and obviously it has a lot of fans and has a good following, but um, I still wouldn't consider myself one of those yet. Um, but I don't know, it's been an adjustment. I'll say that for sure. I mean, growing up in Illinois um, and sort of in a small town, you know, where I used to have some of the guys come back and fish and hang out with the family. Uh, life's gotten a little hectic. It's not, it's not the simple moments anymore. There's not a lot of lines being tossed in the water. Um, and there's traffic where I'm at instead of a couple of main roads. So uh, life's definitely changed. Well, and we want to talk a little bit about your hectic life. But one thing that made it even more hectic somewhat recently was you contracting the coronavirus. That was back in March? Yeah. So I, I say fortunately and unfortunately, I got the coronavirus really early. Um, around the same time that there were spring breakers and partiers still on the beaches in Florida and young people weren't supposed to be able to get it. And meanwhile, I'm locked up on, a, you know, the third story of my girlfriend's family's home, um, bedridden for five days trying to recover from the thing. So, you know, I've, I've since then made a full recovery. I've actually tested three times for it. The first two were positive, the third was negative. So now I'm test, I tested positive for the antibodies and actually made the drive from LA to Colorado. I'm working with the Children's Hospital here to make a donation of my plasma for research and then also for patients who um, need the plasma in the blood injected to help with the healing process and to, to have the antibodies to fight off uh, COVID-19. Well, that's outstanding that, that you're doing that and, and we all appreciate that and we're all happy that you recovered from the disease. Was it uh, pretty tough on you when, when you were going through it? Yeah, I'd definitely say that for, for five days, um, it was, I was very, very symptomatic. And for the beginning part of it, I just thought it was the flu. And then um, sort of overnight, it, it kicked in where I couldn't breathe anymore. And I was uh, struggling to access all of my lungs is what, it, what the best way to describe it. And I couldn't walk to the bathroom without having to sit down and catch my breath. And I could barely even talk. You know, I was very open with um, my sort of my journey through it because at that time the media was saying one thing and then the next hour there was another thing so I was like screwed I'm just gonna record myself and tell you guys firsthand how it is so that's what I tried to do and even that was it was a struggle sometimes it's tough dealing with the media sometimes <laughs> yeah I mean you know what it's it's a good and bad thing I always say that social media gives us access to everybody but not everybody should have access to uh, to be on all those all the time just because there's so much news going out right now. It's almost content is king and um, some people don't really know how to handle it. And I think that that goes for some of our news and some of our media, unfortunately. But um, yeah, I think that the, the thing that we need to rely on right now is just listening to medical professionals and doctors because they're the ones studying this thing. They're the ones that, that have this as their, their profession. Well, that's well said. Let me ask you about uh, your book, which yeah. is entitled The First Time, Finding Myself and Looking for Love on Reality TV. Uh, yeah. So this was related a lot to your experience on The Bachelor and before that, The Bachelorette. But tell us, what was the primary motivation for your writing that book, Colton? I think for writing the book specifically, I just wanted to feel like I had control of my life again. You know, I knew going on reality TV, I was giving up a lot of control, but I didn't know how it affected me mentally. And I struggled the year um, that The Bachelor aired um, after production. And I struggled the year after that, too, just uh, this last year, um, dealing with having so much pressure in my relationship, having so many eyeballs on me. While at, sometimes it's great, you know, for the charity aspects and business opportunities, it's amazing. 
but to have your personal and your business life so meshed together and so focused heavily on who you are, what you're doing, you're under scrutiny always, you can't make a right or wrong decision without having someone in your ear. That's why I wrote the book. But I also want to address, you know, the reason why I titled it what I did and why I even went on The Bachelor in the first place is because I was lost. You know, I, I had football for 17 years of my life and that was my crutch. You know, anytime I needed to go somewhere to let off steam, anytime I wanted to be with friends, you know, football was my social hour. Football was my social life. Football was my life at that time. So I didn't know who Colton was outside of it. And for me, having that year to go on TV shows, it might seem a little random, but um, I, I found out a lot about myself and I really enjoyed it. Well, and you were looking for love. And yeah. that we all do that. And it's, yep. we, and those of us, especially those of us who've been around a while know that it's challenging. So how's that search going for you right now? Well, it's good. And I'm in, I'm in a happy relationship. And I always say this too, because I don't like to sugarcoat it. I don't like to lean into the Hollywood BS um, that a lot of people do. Relationships aren't easy. My relationship isn't perfect. It's not easy all the time. Um, it's hard work. And I think it's okay to admit that. And I think it's okay to admit that you have struggled sometime in a relationship. I, don't, I know on social media, I might paint this perfect picture of a relationship. But that's not always the case. And I think it's important for people to realize that, um, you know, I, but coming off the show, I couldn't be happier, you know, that I got what I want, wanted out of it. And um, yeah, it's been good. It seems to me one of the reasons that so many viewers were attracted to you is because of your forthcoming nature. You're very open about yeah. everything in your life. You certainly were on that show. And, and you were, I remember that you were that way when I interviewed you back when you were a student at, at Illinois State University. How did you become like that? You know what? I don't know. And I don't know if I've always been like that to a certain degree. I think certain aspects, of course, I'm, I'm like that. But um, this last year has been unbelievable as far as um, just coming into myself and growing. Hold on one sec. I have a whining dog. Give me one moment. I'll restart yeah. that for you. This, I hey. think this is Colton's new Come dog. Here. Come here. And apparently a, a young four You want to say hi to her? Buddy, yeah. Her hey. name is... Her name's Zuka, so I actually thought it was going to be a boy, so I named him Bazooka. And uh, turns out he was a she, so we stuck with Zuka, and she's uh, she's going to be a big dog, that's for sure. But I just want to make sure I got her in here with me. I got the doors closed, so hold on one sec. I'll get her bone. You bet. Zuka looks beautiful. Oh, she's amazing. So, so she's a another part in of, LA. She, yeah. She's another part of your love life, actually. Yeah, you know what? I know. I weirdly enough, I just fell in love with her over the last week. I've had her for about a week now, and um, I was supposed to just be fostering her, but uh -huh. I think within three days that went out the window because I fell in love with her. So <laughs> I love hard and fast. I have, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. Well, your experience on The Bachelor, uh, you know, I've heard people say, some skeptics about reality TV, they say there's nothing less real than reality TV. Uh, yeah. how, how, did, how would you answer that uh, claim? I always say this because I, like, like I said before, I don't like to lean into the Hollywood stuff. Um, the whole, even my season probably was one of the more um, open and transparent seasons as far as breaking the fourth wall and showing cameras and production because I didn't really want to put out this picture of hey, this is how you do it. Of course, there's scenes that I had to walk through a door three or four times, or I had to land on a mark for the camera angle, and I had to, I had to wait for cameras to be in position and hold off on saying certain things. And that, that you know what, I mean, that to me was fun, because that was a skill set. That was something I had to work on. That was something for me to sort of take direction and have discipline, and almost took me back to my football days, learning how to do all that. But um I mean, of course, there's scripted things in there, but I will say this, the relationships and my conversations with the girls were not scripted at all. And I think that's why it works is because um, they, don't, they don't give you any information other than what the girls and what the relationship is and what they tell you. And it changed who you are to some degree. A hundred percent. I feel like playing football and playing sports in general, you, you're, you build up so many walls. You, you build a tough exterior so you don't let the competition know that they're getting to you or you learn how to really put a brave face on and walk out and be the tough guy. And for me, it was the exact opposite. I had to take those walls down. I had to take my armor off and I had to just lose it a couple of times on TV 
to uh, to find myself and to grow. And I'm, you know, I'm glad I did. I, I know there is at times, of course, my boys were sending me screenshots and, and showing me, you know, videos of me crying on TV. But, you know, I, I can't, I don't know. I mean, I can't deny that's, that's who I am. That's me. And, uh, you know, for the longest time I hit it or I was ashamed of it, but I mean, there's nothing wrong with being emotional and not being afraid to show it sometimes. Uh, I totally agree with that. Um, and as you get older, I've found you get more emotional. And yeah. so that's happened for you as well, even though you're not very of old. Yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, a couple of the things you have a web series on the all social app called coffee with Colton. Yeah, uh, actually, I've got some coffee right here. I'm having Same coffee here. With Colton right now. <clears throat> mm. Anyway, um, tell us about that. What, what, what's that all about? Um, yeah, so obviously after the show, it's like, okay, what's next? You know, and for me, hosting and TV and entertainment has has been something that I've been passionate about and I loved and has treated me well in the past. So uh, I started a new show called Coffee with Colton, and the idea originally came when I was sitting in a coffee shop and I looked around and. The whole purpose of a coffee shop is a community, the conversations, you know, ha you know, having sort of that that moment to connect with somebody, and nobody was doing that. We we're all on our phones, all on laptops, and I just wanted to take a take a concept that I had, and it was honestly just a passion project, and it turned into a whole big production, and now it, uh, its own series and show. So I couldn't be prouder of, um, you know, the conversations that I've had with some of the guests in this first season, and. It's been amazing. I still have. So I think this next week is uh, Sadie Robertson from Duck Dynasty. And then I have Chris Jericho, former WWE. Um, and now he ha actually has his own, um, his own league. And then I have Drew Scott from the Property Brothers. <clears throat> and then, I mean, the list goes on and on. And it's so many great, great conversations about them outside of what we know them for. So it talks about their passions and their purpose in life and then how they identify. You know, so many people looked at me and said, oh, Colton, the football player. And I always wanted to break out of that mold. I wanted to break out of that stereotype. And I feel like with this project, it's been so nice to have those conversations and relate to people that being like, oh, I feel you. Like I am so much more than just a construction worker. I am so much more than just a wrestler. I have this that I'm passionate about, but nobody gets to see it. And it's been such a cool series. And it's been a great way for me, not only to get to know these people, but even explore you know, myself and what I want out of life even more. How long has that been going on? Well, this is actually the first season, so okay. it's only been going on for a few a few months now. And originally, we're supposed to have strangers on too to talk to complete strangers about their lives and where and how they got to where they went. But due to the COVID nineteen and the restrictions of filming, uh, we really sort of had to to make an adjustment and um, call an audible and adjust on the fly. Well, I have to admit, I wasn't aware of it until I was told about it before I was ready to do this interview. So I'm going to check that out. Yeah. In this, uh, in this scenario, you're the interviewee, but on that show, you're the interviewer. So I, I can't wait yeah. to see you in that role. Yeah. yeah it's, it's great. It's fun. All right. Let's talk about the Colton Underwood Legacy Foundation, which is designed yep. to uh, raise money in the interest of, of, uh, of combating cystic fibrosis and there's a member of your family who inspired you to uh, to create this foundation. Tell us about that. Yeah. So originally, the Legacy Foundation, I attached my name to it, obviously, because it wasn't it wasn't never it was never intended to be a national organization. So I was like, oh, I'll, you know, throw my name on it. And now I'm like, I don't know if I should have done that, but you know, it, it is something of mine that I've built from the ground up and from scratch. So I take pride in that. But the Legacy Foundation has been. Uh, I mean, it's been such a big part of my life for the last five years. And what we do is we raise money and, um, you know, we have partnerships with other companies to help support cystic fibrosis patients to make sure that they can live their best life. And what we've done so far in the last five years, not only financially helping people in hospitals, but we have created this community of families that know that they can lean on each other to ask questions, to um, figure out what medications worked, what what didn't work, you know, how they use their vests, what is, you know, what's going on in the, the healthcare laws. Um, there's so many great resources that we've sort of built out for these families to lean on each other and to use each other during, especially during these times, that it's been very, very special. So yeah, the Legacy Foundation has been sort of this passion project of mine too that blew up and it's been an awesome, awesome five years. But it was your cousin, Harper, yep who contracted born, the disease or who at least was diagnosed with the disease when he was extremely young, who, who really yeah. kind of motivated you to go in this direction, right? 
Yeah. So Har yeah. So Harper was born with cystic fibrosis at birth. And um, for those of you who don't know what cystic fibrosis is, it is the respiratory, um, basically the thickening of the mucus in the lungs and it keeps bacteria in their lungs so they get sick. So what we're actually experiencing right now, Dick, that's what is really interesting about it. Um, cystic fibrosis patients have to do every single day of their life. When they travel, they wear masks, you know, they, um, the common cold can hospitalize them. So they have to be very careful of what they touch. Um, you know, washing their hands is very important. Uh, it's, it's an interesting time right now in the CF community because they're all looking around being like, you know, we've been through this and done this before, but it's also interesting because they have to take extra precautions now too, because a respiratory illness like this, I couldn't imagine if I already had a pre-existing condition of a respiratory illness, what that virus could have done to me. So, um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things right now that I'm glad that I have the foundation because they can lean on each other and the families have come together during this time. Well, that's wonderful. It, it's, uh, it's inspiring to many of us, Colton, what, uh, what you're doing now, what you've done, what you did when you were at Illinois State, but what, yep. what you've done since there. Um, keep up the great work. So glad that, uh, that you've overcome the coronavirus and uh, thanks so much for being with us. Absolutely. I can't, thank you, uh, I can't thank Illinois State University enough for my time there, and it's helped me shape me into the man I am today. That's wonderful to hear. Colton Underwood, ladies and gentlemen, glad you could join us for this edition of Redbird Reunion. I'm Dick Ludke saying so long for now.